Hi, I'm Scott Slump, the Health and Safety Battalion Chief for CAL FIRE Riverside County Fire Department. And this is Report on Conditions. This week, we'll take you to a vehicle fire and gas leak, and Battalion Chief Scott Phillipbar explains the importance of water safety to a special guest at Lake Elsinore. Hi, and thanks for joining CAL FIRE, Riverside County Fire Department's Report on Conditions. I'm Jody Hageman. Last week from July 25th through July 31st, our firefighters responded to 3,560 calls for service. Included in those calls were 2,767 medical emergencies and 104 fire-related calls. Of the fire calls, 32 were vegetation fires and 20 were structure fires. Let's dive into a few highlighted incidents from the past week. On Thursday night, July 28th, firefighters received reports of an explosion near Tyler Street and Airport Boulevard in the city of Coachella. The first arriving engine reported a vehicle fully involved in flames with a threat to nearby vegetation. Fortunately, firefighters were able to keep the fire from spreading beyond the vehicle and fully contain the flames in about 15 minutes. No injuries were reported to civilians or firefighters. On Friday, July 29th, firefighters were dispatched to a vegetation fire near Colfax Street and Avenue 71 in the unincorporated community of Mecca. The first arriving unit reported a 20 square foot pile of mulch on fire that was surrounded by dry brush. Firefighters were able to quickly stop the forward rate of spread, but the flames were deeply seeded in the large mulch pile. With the fire contained, the incident was terminated and turned over to the landowners. No civilian or firefighter injuries were reported. In the morning hours of Friday, July 29th, firefighters received reports of a gas leak near the crossings of Richard Street and Honorado Drive in the suburb of Lakeland Village. The first arriving engine reported a backhoe that had struck a natural gas line, causing the leak. Riverside County sheriffs were called to the incident to maintain traffic control, while firefighters worked with Southern California Gas to resolve the incident. Eight homes were ordered to shelter in place throughout the duration of the gas leak. The leak was mitigated at around 11 a.m. that same day, and the shelter in place order has since been lifted. No injuries to civilians or firefighters were reported. On Friday, July 29th, firefighters were dispatched to a smoke detector alarm in a multifamily dwelling at the 82,400 block of Miles Avenue in the city of Indio. After determining the zone of the smoke detector, the first arriving engine company discovered a small mattress on fire within the unit. Resources remained on scene for ventilation throughout the structure. No injuries were reported to civilians or firefighters. Currently, we're working hand-in-hand uh, -hand with Workforce Development and the Marina Valley College uh, to create a cohort, a second cohort at the college uh, to allow a pathway for our Firefighter 1s and our LT Firefighter 2s uh, to become paramedic certified. During that process, we are also working with Workforce Development and getting those tuitions paid for so there's no cost to the employee. And these funds basically act as a scholarship program for um, interested in individuals coming to the School of Public Safety um, at the EMT level, the paramedic level, the uh, fire academy level, and some of our law enforcement um, level courses as well. Uh, this, this scholarship actually will pay in full if uh, eligible candidates meet the requirements, uh, their tuition, their, their books, the, all of the uniforms and materials that are required for the course and the completion of the course. We want to reach out to our Explorer programs, our VRFF program, our Firefighter 1s, uh, LT Firefighter 2s, uh, anything we can do to mentor, guide, and lead you in the direction to make you successful in our paramedic program, that's what we want to strive to do. Uh, we definitely have a shortage of paramedics and we need to try to get everybody we can to start mentoring from within. The prerequisites that uh, we're expecting our students to have are your basic 1,000 hours of uh, EMT experience or six months of full-time EMT experience. The other requirement is the American Heart Association healthcare provider level CPR card which is not too difficult to obtain through the department. In addition, we require a course that's called Bio 45. It's a basic anatomy and physiology course. It is without a lab. That course is offered by Marina Valley College in an online format. In addition to that, uh, they need to look for the paramedic application process that's gonna start September 1st and run through November 30th. This will be for paramedic uh, class 26. It starts in February. Last year, we ran approximately 164,000 EMS responses, and we're on target to do over 200,000 this year. Uh, we are one of the largest ALS providers uh, in Southern California. 
Uh, we are, we have all aspects of what we provide for our county, uh, from our desert to our mountains uh, to our metropolitan areas. Uh, there's definitely a, a diverse group of individuals uh, with all kinds of uh, tool sets that allow them to do their job, and we're here to support those employees as best we can. Appreciate all of our firefighters and the hard work and effort that they put in. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for our individuals that are working in the seasonal capacity if they want to make that move to become a paramedic to look at this opportunity. This is an opportunity I don't think has been ever around that I've known of and this is a great opportunity for somebody to be benefit from it and be have a lifelong career from uh, the funding that would be available through workforce development. I, I mean. It's, pretty, it's a pretty awesome deal, and it's going to be nice to see how many, how many young men and women get come in to, to do the paramedic program. There are replacements. We've got to invest in our future, and that's where it's at. Swimming is a fun activity during the summer, but it's all too often that we push water safety to the sidelines. Let's join Battalion Chief Scott Philibar and Melody in Lake Elsinore to learn important water safety tips. This is my truck that I'm in every single day. This is my computer. This is what sends all the calls to, and this is the map that takes us to the call. Hi, I'm Chief Scott Philibar with Cal Fire Riverside County Fire Department. Hi, I'm Melody. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to go play on the beach. Is there anything I should know before I go? Yeah, today we're gonna go over some water safety tips so you're safe at the lake at all times. Oh, great. Can I swim? by myself? You should never swim by yourself. You should always have a parent or guardian watching you while you're in the water at all times. Can my parents play games on their phones while we're in the water? Your phones could be a distraction and you should never have your phone should only be used for emergency purposes only. Who should be watching me while we're in the water? You should always have what we call a water watcher. A water watcher watches all kids and adults that are in the water at all times, and they don't have any distractions present. Can I use floaties in the water to help me swim? You should never use floaties. You should always use a Coast Guard approved life safety vest that fits snugly, and they make them for both adults and children. Does everyone know how to swim? No, not everybody, but we do offer plenty of water safety courses and swim lessons throughout Riverside County. Oh, great. Thank you, Chief, for all your help. What about boating? I have my friends here from the Riverside County Sheriff's Department, and they can go over boating safety tips with you. Oh, great. OK, thank you. Goodbye. Bye, Melody. Hi, I'm Melody. Hi, Melody. I'm Deputy Wisniewski with Riverside Sheriff's Department. Oh, nice to meet you. What should I wear on a boat? Everyone's required to have a United States Coast Guard approved personal flotation device. What should I watch for when boating? While boating, you should be watching for swimmers in the water, people in and about the area, um, any hazards, and uh, no wake zones to watch your speed. Is it safe for me to drive the boat? Melody, for your age, it's, it's, you're not allowed to drive a boat just yet. It's required everyone under 45 years of age and younger to have a um, boater's education card. When is it a bad idea to be on the water? For Lake Elsinore, it, later in the days, you can have high winds, and at certain times of the year, you can have monsoons that are coming about. Oh, thank you. I learned so much today. Can I go for a ride? Yes, Molly, let's go. Yay, great. And you already have your life vest on, but if someone did go over the side of the boat, we have our throw device that you can throw to that person to make sure they're okay. And that way you can come back and retrieve them. Um, what's your, what's the toughest fire, fire to fight? What's the toughest fire to fight? Toughest fire to fight, I'd say it'd be a, a large scale campaign fire. Campaign fire is a wildland fire that usually includes thousands of acres with multiple agencies working together to put out the fire, such as dozers, hand crews, engines, aircraft. They usually last for an extended amount of time, a couple weeks, months, depends how big it is. A couple of difficulties with it is steep terrain, heavy brush, heavy fuels, and they take 
quite a bit of effort to put them out. We'd like to congratulate Chris Matthews, Josh Allen, and Dustin Reed on their promotion to Battalion Chief. Included in July's promotions is our new Division Chief, Josh Jansen. We'd also like to say farewell to retirees Fire Captain George Rojas and Fire Captain John Shirokawa. Thank you for your many years of service, gentlemen. This past weekend, Riverside County Fire Chief and Unit Chief Bill Weiser, along with firefighters around California, attended the annual California Professional Firefighters Memorial held in Sacramento. They paid tribute to 85 firefighters that died in the line of duty in California. Out of the 85, four of those firefighters were here from the Riverside Unit. Hans Bulowicz. Jacob Flores. Douglas Schenk. And Mark Riddell. <laughs>